Hello, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the terminal. Now, it can be a little bit confusing to people. There's multiple pieces of terminology that, although sound like they're the same thing, um, it's often interchanged incorrectly. And even more than that, the terminal is kind of a scary thing for some people. And so this video is mostly for a longtime friend of mine who asked me this question. And so I want to dive into it and explain some of the differences and nuances between these terms. So let's dive right into it. So there are a few things to keep in mind when we talk about the terminal. The very first thing is, and the way in which we interact with the terminal is a terminal application. And so if we were to just open, literally just open the terminal app, um, this is the default one and this is what it looks like. So terminal, right? And this just lives in your, um, this just lives in your application uh, directory. It is, uh, all it is, is a Mac OS application, right? Or Windows application or whatever it is that you're running. It's just an application. And its intent is to bridge the user with the system, right? And so when we use the terminal, what we're really doing is we're interacting with uh, our co computer at a lower level, right? Beyond just a GUI, right? We call, it, we call it the operating system, a graphical user interface. And so what we want to do is go kind of behind the curtains um, and the way to do that is to open literally um, terminal. And I believe this one lives in utilities. And so here it lives. All right, so that's the first thing to keep in mind. And I actually use an alternative one. I use one called Alacrity. And I have a video on how that works um, if you want to check that out. I'll link to it right now. Um, and the next thing to think about uh, and we'll just go ahead and kill all of this so this is my terminal um, the next piece of information to understand is the shell now the shell is um, a specific binary and we'll talk more about binaries but basically a shell is your way in which you interact with your computer um, and so the defaults uh, are just sh is actually it's like the most basic version of this um, the most common you'll hear is bash. And so bash is, um, think of it like a script. And so this script has a set of commands in which we can interact with our computer. Um, and so this is basic things like PWD for the present working directory, LS to list commands, and then CD to change directories. And so these are the basics. But all of these things right here, like C, uh, C, uh, CD and LS and PWD, these are, are um, functions that are based off of the Bash shell. Um, and then recently, fairly controversial, um, Mac OS has decided to switch to the ZSH shell. And you notice when I type that in and hit enter, it actually changes, and that's because your shell can be configured. And so if you watch my Alacrity setup video, you see that I show you how to set up your shell to kind of look a certain way and, and, and do certain things. Um, and in this case, uh, Z shell is the default. Um, and I don't use uh, Z shell. Um, I use one called fish and fish all fishes is a friendly interactive shell. And so it has slightly different commands. It offers some additional features to make my life a little bit easier. So if I wanted to do something like um, yarn, uh, you can see that I have E to E is like auto completed. And that is just a feature in fish that isn't going to be um, provided by default by Z shell or bash. And so I just kind of like the quality of life that fish shell gives me. Um, and so what's happening uh, is the terminal application is just executing the shell of your choice. And if you ever don't know where you're at and what shell you're using, you can just say echo shell, which I've mentioned in a previous video. So that'll just kind of tell you what shell is currently running. Um, and then 
as you start to work in the terminal and as you start to do some interesting things with it, you will have to continue to add additional binaries. And so let's talk about um, a basic one that I really enjoy, um, which is FCF. Um, what it is is it's a fuzzy finder tool that allows me to do um, interesting and unique sort of lookups. Uh, and I'll show you a quick example. So let's, uh, uh, this is my shell history. And so this is a list of all of the shell commands that I've run. So I can do like git status. And you can see that I've run git status in a few different ways. Um, and then I can just select it. Not a git repository, but the command still runs. And so git right here is another binary, just like bash and fish and all the other ones I've mentioned. Uh, in the way that that shell is set up, we can also create binaries that do all sorts of other things. Now, the warning that I have to say about all this is these binaries have direct access to your computer. And so it is important that you sort of download these binaries responsibly, um, but it very much shouldn't limit you from diving in and experimenting with new tools and new utilities and things that can help you improve your workflow. Um, and typically I look at GitHub and I look at like how many stars there are and how popular it is and how, you know, when it was recently updated. Um, and of course, all of the ones that I personally choose are open sourced. And so if I feel extra nervous about it or I'm unsure of something, I can always go through the source code and see what it looks like before I install it on my computer. Um, now, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, brew is my favorite way of managing those dependencies. So I can do like brew install FCF and it will install that binary onto my computer. Now, this is sort of the part that I think some people get caught up on and don't quite understand. And so I'm going to try to break this down. Um, the question is, where does FCF go? How do, like, why is it available to me? If I type these three letters, it's now something that can run. Um, and the way that this works is your shell environment, so mine is fish, my shell environment has a path. And so if we just echo, let's do this, uh, path. And so what I can do is I can tell my computer and I can tell my shell environment, so I can say, hey fish, you are allowed to look in all of these directories on my computer. So this looks like .volta bin, that's for my node management, SQL light, uh, so SQL light for database stuff. Um, you'll see this node modules .bin, that one's really useful to me. Um, and there's sorts, all sorts of node modules .bins, and so I may play around with that and, and reduce it. But here's the most important ones, um, opt homebrew bin and user bin and slash bin, right? All of these house binaries. So we could just literally go to it, user bin. And if we take a look, we're gonna see, let's just kind of make this bigger for us, that there's all sorts of binaries that are built into our computer. And so these mostly are a combination of built-in and Homebrew will often copy files to this place so that it all sort of plays nice. Um, and so we'll see ones that are, I know PB copy is one that I really like. So let's see, we, I saw that one. Um, PB copy is one that lets you deal with the Mac OS clipboard. So you can like copy to your clipboard using the command line. Um, and then we also have, uh, let's go ahead and echo our path again. We have this opt homebrew bin. And this one's really important. And so CD opt. So every time that I, every time that I brew install something, um, it's going to end up living here. And so this is all sorts of dependencies and dependencies of dependencies. Everything is all installed here. And so if I want to do something like node, right, node is now there or um, ZX or NeoFetch, this one's kind of fun, right? It just kind of pastes information about my computer. And so again, all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, I want to install this. So I use a package manager called Homebrew 
And once I have it, um, the, the real trick, uh, and in, in fish it's slightly different, uh, fish.config, oh, I think it's the other way around. Actually, let's get me in my Tmux environment. Um, so I go a bit in depth and I have more videos coming about Tmux. Um, so Tmux, uh, let's open that and that and we'll And so I have to explicitly say I want to add opt homebrew bin and sbin to my path. Um, and typically uh, in Z shell, uh, there's a similar way of doing it. Um, let's see ZSHRC, where you create uh, the path variable and you um, kind of add the thing you want to it. And then you use this colon dollar path to append everything else back in. And so there is some priority. Um, and I've done this on purpose in some cases. So if I have like a uh, one of my projects here, I may have binaries installed in node module dot bin. And so we haven't talked about which yet, but which is going to be a good one to talk about. Um, I can kind of prioritize and say, if I want to run a binary and I have multiple versions of the same one, the way in which you define path will determine which binary is resolved. And so this just takes time as you configure your setup and you start to get the sense of how these things come together. Um, and so I'm hoping this all makes sense. Um, and when in doubt, if you notice just now, I used the which. And so which is a really great way of telling me what binary it resolves to. And so instead of actually running it, just point to the thing. So like SQL light three, and we can see opt homebrew. And there's a specific binary coming from SQL light that I want to see. And so like, which node is another popular one. So you can see I have my node manager called Volta and uh, 16, 17 bin node is the thing that's called. And so again, uh, if we take a step back one more time and talk it through, uh, we have an application terminal. So this is the, the Mac OS application that emulates the terminal and allows us to basically communicate with the back end of our computer. And when the terminal runs or whatever terminal app of your choosing runs, it will start a, a shell environment. And so the shell environment is bash and Z shell and fish is my mine uh, preference. And so when it starts up and it starts showing you these, this prompt, um, it will be running under that shell. And then finally, the way in which our computer all starts to do interesting and useful things under the hood with, with this tool, um, we either use in uh, built in, um, binaries, or we can use third party package tools like homebrew to install additional binaries onto our computer. Um, and so I hope all of this makes sense. Let's chat for a second. I think the terminal is an interesting and exciting environment to do uh, complex things. Um, you can automate your life in a lot of ways with this. Uh, and then most importantly, as a programmer, you can develop and extend it. Um, and so you'll see my dev workflow video, which I'll link to now as well. Um, so that video goes through sort of my day to day and how I get work done. And I am able to do all of this in the terminal. And so I use a terminal based code editor called NeoVim. I also use a session manager called Tmux, which allows me to sort of have multiple sessions and multiple we call them buffers. And so like when you're running code, um, you can have different one of those running all at the same time in parallel because um, our computers are super fast and modern. Um, and so the terminal is a powerful thing. Uh, and so I would just recommend that you ease into it uh, and that you take it one step at a time. And over time, uh, your knowledge will build on top of itself. And um, I just find it so interesting and exciting to work in this environment. And so I hope that's a helpful overview. Uh, if you want to hear more about this kind of stuff, 
um, feel free to hit follow. And um, I will be going into TMUX more. Um, I'll also be going into NeoVim a lot more. And um, I really like my fish environment. And so if that's of something that people want to know more about, perhaps I'll make more about that. Um, so I'll see you next time.